Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back. Today, I want to give you a short species spotlight on a rather unique live bear. It's a Mexican species. It is critically endangered. These live bears are called gadeids. The one in question today is Xenotoka lion's eye, and it comes from the Rio Tamazula. I think it's a fascinating live bear, and it's definitely worthy of keeping in our aquariums. So sit back, and hopefully you'll enjoy this little species spotlight on this wonderful little fish. Enjoy! Fishes of the genus Xenotoka are naturally occurring true live-bearing fishes in the family Gidaeidae, or as we call them, Gidaeids. The genus is comprised of three species, Isonai, which is the more commonly seen species in the aquarium hobby, Deodroii, and the one we are discussing today, Lion's Eye. They are all somewhat similar in appearance, however their ranges their natural ranges do not overlap. They are all Mexican in origin and inhabit a diverse range of habitats, from rivers and creeks, small pools and lakes, all within the central plateau region. Although they are far from common in the aquarium hobby, these marvelous species all share one common name, the red tail split fins. In all, three species, the males are very colorful and the females being rather plain and drab in coloration, as seen by this large, heavily pregnant female. Gadeids in general are characterized by a unique structure called the trophotania, which essentially is an umbilical cord-like structure that passes at birth still attached to the newborn fry. It falls off shortly thereafter. This trait is unique among live bears. All gadeids are critically endangered fishes. They are all on the CARES program, or the CARES list, and they are in desperate need of our assistance to ensure their survival. Their natural ecosystems are in critical danger due to the destruction of their natural habitats, through intensive demand for agricultural products, and the runoff of fertilizers, as well as the burgeoning population growth requires much more food production, so the introduction of non-native species to their waterways, such species as tilapias, means a quick and swift decimation to this diminutive life bear. It is quite likely, in short order, that the only gadeids left in the world may very well be swimming within the confines of our aquarium. Xenotoka lion's eye was formally described by Dominguez Dominguez Bernal Zuninga and DMKR Peeler in 2016. So it's a very recent species, having split up the genera from originally from Isonai into three distinct species. This species was given this distinction name in honor of the prominent North American ichthyologist, Dr. John Lyons, who has made several contributions to our understanding of the distribution, ecology, diversity and conservational status of fishes in Mexico, with a particular emphasis on the Gadeids. So we call this one the Tamazula red tail split fin, and it is endemic to the Mexican federal state of Jalisco. The waterways where Xenotoka lion's eye inhabits are often areas with high seasonal change in regards to water volume, water clarity, turbidity, they all require good quality water with a high oxygen potential. Unlike its relatives, the little platies or the pasteleids like the guppies, the xenotokas often get a little bit larger and far more robust. A large female, a large old female, could obtain easily three to four inches in size. 
As far as live bears in general, this being a wild live bear, this particular species and all other members of Xenotoka are far more gregarious and boisterous within the home aquarium. They do make sometimes often ideal candidates as companions, dare I say the word dither fish, for some of the less aggressive Central American cichlids, such as Therichthys, Cribohiros, and maybe even some of the vieja species. I would avoid keeping them with any of the parachromids or the large predators for obvious reasons, but I think they are an absolutely fascinating fish, that in themselves. Keeping them within the aquarium, as long as the aquarium is set up correctly for them with good oxygenation, good water flow, nice bright clear water, they are easily cared for. They, I keep them in my planted aquariums with some of my more diminutive Central American cichlids like Amatitlania and Cryptohero species. And they are excellent consumers of maintaining uh, control over things such as hair algae. They're opportunistic grazers, easily fed on most aquarium fare, but the addition of some green matter into their diet will make them thrive. As this species requires good, clean water, water management within the aquarium is of critical importance. Large scale and frequent water changes are an absolute must for success. The waterways in which they inhabit do have a seasonal drop in temperature. I maintain them in most of the spring, summer, fall months around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And then in the winter months, I remove the heater so that the temperature of the tank will drop a few degrees, dropping down to about 21 degrees Celsius or about 70, degree, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is room temperature in my home. This will ensure that your fish will remain healthy for several years because maintained at the constant high temperatures, they would age very quickly and they'd be, uh, they wouldn't be as resistant to things such as disease. In my observations in my home aquarium, breeding is continuous and females seem to be gravid constantly. Fry are always popping up in amongst the plants in different stages. Now, I, I maintain them in fairly large aquariums. I've had them in 75s, 40 breeders, honestly been about the smallest I've ever kept them in. The tank that you see right now is actually a 120 gallon fully planted aquarium. In smaller tanks, there has been, has been signs of them being aggressive, intraspecific aggression towards each other. And if you keep them with anything that's slower moving with delicate finish, it very well may be prone to nipping. If you can maintain the proper water conditions for this species, Reproducing this species in captivity is relatively easy. Gadeids, called split fins, are called that because they have a modified structure on the seventh ray of their anal fin on the males. Unlike other, uh, other live bears, such as your guppies, sword tails, and pleiades, uh, who have a gonopodium, this structure is a modified structure a little bit different, but they still practice internal fertilization. The fry are easily reared within the aquarium and grazing on the different uh, things that should show up on the plant life and algae, and they will take all aquarium fare, same as the adults. I think they are truly fascinating. I, I personally enjoy the wild types of live bears far more than the captive strains of the man-made species that are in our hobby today. If you have an interest in pursuing wild live bears or critically endangered live bears, I strongly suggest you look up the Gadead Working Group at www.gadeadworkinggroup.com as well as the CARES program. C-A-R-E-S dot com.
and they will provide you with all sorts of information of fishes that are in desperate need of our help. So as always, thank you kindly for watching. Take care.